Bjorchen is going to talk about multiple path planning and max, maximum information. So um, please go ahead, Bjorchen. Uh, thank you very much, Andrew. And I'd like to thank the organizers for inviting me, giving me this opportunity. I will uh, talk about an extension of the talk I had given actually last year in Wombat. Um, I had presented a single path planning for maximum information. This time uh, I will try to do it uh, in, uh, in multiples. So um, a, a preprint can be found uh, in Archive, uh, Observer path, plan, path Planning for Maximum Information. Uh, in fact, I, I will point to what material is coming from that paper and what is additional. First, uh, I will describe the, what's called the bearings only localization using multiple observers. Uh, then we'll formulate, we'll show a formulation of this problem uh, using optimal control. Uh, once it's in the standard optimal control uh, problem, then we can uh, write down uh, optimality conditions. These are important because uh, very often that's best we can do. We cannot go further. We have to do everything numerically. But strange things can happen uh, because um, we are in uh, the infinite dimensional space. We are dealing with functions instead of points in Rn. So it's important to check the numerical results against the optimality conditions. So it's essential uh, when you have an optimal control problem to write down these optimality conditions uh, and, um, and, and check them um, uh, comparing with the uh, uh, numerical results. Okay, as I hinted, um, after once we get the uh, optimal control model, um, I, I will. Um, describe some uh, numerical technique that we are using and, and, and some experimentation results and what more can be done in the future about that. So we are talking about a situation like this. Suppose that this green dot is a target emitting signal. And uh, we have here, let's say three observers. These may be UAVs, for example, they're uninhabited um, aerial vehicles, or it may be autonomous underwater vehicles, anything that moves and creates a trajectory uh, that is expected to help measurements. Why? Because over time you're positioning the vehicle or the observer in such a way that you hope uh, you will uh, maximize the information that you're getting because what you are measuring here is only the angle uh, between the observer and the target as the signal is coming from there. Signal is corrupt, and uh, that's why it becomes interesting to use an estimator. And for that estimator to do a good job, uh, you have to make sure that you are maximizing information. And I, I will explain what we mean by that. So we have three observers here and three suggested trajectories uh, against this, this target. Uh, so we may uh, think of um, a single observer, a, a, a typical trajectory. In fact, uh, I'm going to discuss these as real examples. So this shows uh, an example situation where uh, we have um, five kilometers apart from uh, where the signal is emitted from the target. Uh, and um, we have exactly 120 seconds time to gather information. So we want to maximize this information, but the observer at that instance is traveling towards the east. So the target is in the west, so it has to make a turn, but that turn cannot be sharp, so sharp. Uh, it has to have some curvature bound. So a bound on the curvature at which the vehicle can maneuver is also included in the, in the model. Anyway, this turns out to be the optimal. I, I will explain in more detail. If we have two observers, one above the other, suppose that they are traveling together towards east and they detect this signal and then 
they move back. Of course, it's sensible for these observers to get as close to the em emitted signal as possible, but you cannot get too close for various reasons. You may have very little time, not even 120 seconds, but maybe 20 seconds you have. Then your movement will be even more limited and the information that you gather will be much more critical to be, to be maximized. If you have three, then uh, this turns out to be, for this configuration, for this particular configuration, these trajectories happen to be uh, the best. Where is uh, this encountered? Well, you may already have uh, started to guess that search and rescue operations where typically there would be a beacon or some signal, distress signal, SOS being sent. Uh, and uh, also monitoring, you can find papers uh, published in the monitoring of the endangered species or invasive species that you want to know exactly where they are located after perhaps tagging some uh, members of the population. And of course, it's very important in defense type of applications. Well, let's take a look at this diagram to see how we start modeling uh, the problem. So because we have a number of observers, so this is observer I, this is target, so the coordinates we choose uh, by, by using these uh, symbols. And uh, here the observer is traveling at constant speed, VI, and it's making an angle with the horizontal, which is referred to as the course of the vehicle. It's heading angle, really. So that, that's one uh, important uh, uh, variable, let's say. Another important variable is bearing angle. Uh, which are being measured from observer I. So what is observed here is the bearing angle. But this observation is corrupt um, because of sometimes uh, also because of the movement of the observer. Observer might, be, might have to make very sharp movements and it, it alone corrupts the signal. Okay, we, but we will have assumptions on uh, where this bearing angle um, uh, distributed. Well, we take point mass dynamics, just use the uh, Newton's second law of motion. Then you can write the simple dy dynamics, uh, basically uh, the X component of the velocity, we write it as one equation and Y component of uh, of the, uh, the, the uh, velocity, another equation. Of course, I mean, I said Newton's second law of motion. One would write a third equation here, but we will include it later. Usually it is not included in the literature when you see models, just these two are given. It's a more like a kinematic model. It's not really a dynamic model per se, that the inertial effects uh, very often are not taken into account. Well, here we are not taking into account so much, but we will, we will have the acceleration too, and that will be represented by the rate of theta. Define the relative observer position, just difference between the observer position and the target position. Uh, the other assumption that we have uh, is that, okay, we have the measurement, this simple measurement equation from the geometry. Uh, this WI, uh, which is uh, the uncertainty uh, that in the measurement beta, and that comes from a normal distribution with zero mean and sigma I squared variance. So sigma I is the standard deviation, if you like. Okay, uh, how is information measured? I'm talking about maximization of information. The, the, the information is uh, described in terms of what we refer to here, what we refer to as the Fisher information matrix. This derivation is not straightforward. And I took uh, the, this expression. In fact, I couldn't find this expression for uh, multiple observers, 
But for single observer, that is for n equals one, you can find uh, this expression along with its derivation uh, from the 1980s and 90s from many papers. But these two papers that uh, I'm uh, citing is regarded as um, quite uh, fundamental, let's say. Uh, for multiple observers, uh, I've written here two very recent uh, uh, papers, but there are many other. In fact, you, you can place hundreds of papers between the 80s, 90s, and this year. Uh, so still, they haven't given this continuous time form. I had to convert it into continuous time form because uh, uh, my aim is to write down an optimal control uh, problem in continuous time so that I can use the well-established uh, theory. Here, uh, the Fisher information matrix here, uh, interestingly, it is, okay, by its definition, in fact, it's the inverse of the covariance matrix of the maximum likelihood estimation error. Okay, we consider this, of course, in addition, additionally, we also consider the point mass dynamics and other various constraints that you may like to uh, think of. Okay, we have a matrix, but we knew, need some quantity as a measure of the information. And one measure that is considered is the determinant of uh, the Fisher information matrix. What does it correspond to? Well. Uh, it is okay. Uh, the, the term, um, the Fisher information matrix is the inverse of the covariance. And uh, covariance of a random process uh, describes um, when, it, when it's positive definite, it describes an ellipse in two dimensions if it's two by two matrix. And the area of that ellipse is given by the determinant of um, the covariance matrix. So we want to make that uncertainty ellipse, meaning that, okay, you have a measurement and uh, you have uh, a corresponding uh, ellipse determined by the covariance matrix. It means that, well, uh, you're giving me a number using your estimator. So the, the, the point though, uh, can be anywhere in this ellipse. So you want that ellipse to be as small as possible so as to report uh, what you've measured uh, accurately. So, um, okay, determinant of F is one measure, then one over the determinant is nothing but the area of the uncertainty ellipse associated with the covariance matrix. What do we do? We want to minimize the um, determinant of the uh, covariance matrix. In other words, we want to maximize the determinant of the Fisher information matrix, subject to other constraints. Okay, what are the approaches? But well, this setting is very well known, very well known. It, it, is, it is being used since uh, 1980s. As far as I can go back, perhaps there is earlier work, but as far as I could find, and the early important works um, are, are these two references and many others. Others means hundreds of others. Um, okay, the discrete model is taken and uh, the dynamics also taken as uh, discreetly. The, what uh, people are concerned is the waypoints. At each waypoint, a measurement is taken and everything's done um, in a discrete fashion. Maybe that is more realistic, but you are missing the rich dynamics. It is more realistic, I said, because maybe um, you're taking the measurement in discrete time intervals. But we will assume in what we have here, a continuous measurement of um, the betas, the bearing angles. Okay. So, and, and then, okay, we, yeah, they have this finite dimensional optimization problem and apply some dis descent methods and, and report some optimal uh, solution. The optimal solution uh, being uh, the trajectory in terms of waypoints. Way okay, in um, another paper, this is uh, Fasserius van Kappel, 
Um, in fact, the, 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 it's one of the rare papers where continuous time dynamics is, is written and they derived an Euler-Lagrange optimality conditions because the control is not constrained. So there's no, um, uh, the, the uh, curvature constraint is not imposed in the model. Also, uh, usually in many of these models, the initial angle, initial course, initial uh, heading angle is also not um, proposed or imposed. Uh, that, that's why, I mean, they, they don't bother writing down the dynamics involved in theta, the acceleration. However, it's important. I mean, suppose that you are going west, there is a target in the, uh, in the east, then you cannot turn 180 degrees in, 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 in zero seconds, right? So there has to be some constraint. And last year, in, in the talk that I, I gave, and then I, I wrote up um, uh, more carefully about what I had said. Um, initial course, I, I had uh, prescribed, and also the constraint turning radius, by curvature, one over the curvature is nothing but the uh, turning radius. Maybe it's practically more uh, sensible, more, more meaningful when you think of vehicles that are doing curvilinear motion. So um, what I came across was the special controls that in control, optimal control theory, we refer to as bang bang and singular controls. So it's possible to characterize them. And it's not possible since to this stage, it hasn't been possible for me to see even a mention of uh, these bang bang and singular controls. Uh, in the existing literature. So what we do now is look at multiple observers. So we have more than one observer. Again, well, uh, you, you can find uh, many papers, maybe not hundreds, but um, quite a few. Um, again, discrete models are used. There is no continuous time, um, uh, optimal control, formal problems. Uh, that are uh, given, and uh, no mention of bang bang and singular controls. I'm going to describe what they are soon. So, in forming the optimal control model, the first step that we have is to describe. Okay, what's the to describe the determinant? What's the determinant? Determinant is the multiplication of the diagonal entries, the in in and uh, minus uh, the multiplication of the off-diagonal entries. But we have here integrals involved, and uh, it's going to look like a mess. However, uh, we can use a trick, which is very often employed in optimal control, and we can rewrite those integrals in terms of new, addition, new uh, state variables. So the first entry, uh, with this one, I think entry two, two, uh, so we write it as integral from zero to T rather than TF. And we put the initial condition to be zero. So when you integrate this up to TF, then you really have that um, entry to two of the um, uh, Fisher information matrix. So we, we do the same to the other entries and we can write down the determinant in this nice and neat form in terms of the new state variables. Z1, Z2, Z3, and we have one each of these for each observer, I. Put everything together now, what we want to know is minimize the negative of the determinant. We rewrite the negative, uh, subject to the dynamics. This is more like kin kinematics, actually. I would call this kinematics. Uh, it all comes from geometry. Uh, and uh, and then these new state variables. So in this one, we have five N states and N controls as many as the number of observers. So we want to take into account an additional equation, which makes it really uh, a Newtonian uh, dynamics 
um, then uh, then 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 we have uh, we can we can prescribe this initial um, uh, heading angle, and also we can impose curvature constraints. So that's what we do here. A is the bound on curvature. Uh, Bi is the uh, velocity of each uh, observer. Here we can, uh, just for sake of simplicity, otherwise it doesn't change the rest of uh, the uh, approach. So these sigma i's, we take them to be all the same. And we can rewrite it without even sigma appearing. It's only a constant after all. This is our optimum control model. It's, it's a huge model because of the number of, uh, depending on how many uh, observers we have. So if we have three observers, then we will have uh, 18 states and, and uh, three control variables. So it's, it's in, in control, theory terms, it's huge. But when it came to practice, numerically speaking, uh, it, was, um, it wasn't so much a big a deal uh, to solve even problems with 10 observers, for example. Anyway, I won't go into details of maximum principle. However, what we need to know is that we define a Hamiltonian function. And in this Hamiltonian function, the most important term is, is this, which involves the control. We know that this uh, Hamiltonian is uh, linear in control. We define adjoint variables. That is the partial derivatives of H with respect to the states with a minus sign in front and uh, transversality conditions. We, can, we have an immediate observation and we can write down uh, the adjoint equation for theta i in this way. So we note one thing, when you check these at, at the terminal time, tf, uh, when we check um, the values of uh, the adjoint variables, or Lagrange multipliers, if you like, or cold state variables, uh, several names given to it. Um, so they are, they are zero. Uh, lambda xi and lambda yi, uh, and immediately we can conclude that the, uh, the derivative of the adjoint variable uh, of, with respect to theta i, is um, not with respect, that the derivative with respect to, but adjoint variable corresponding to uh, the theta i is equal to zero. This is inform important information, again, in comparing the uh, results. And these lambda theta i's will play an important role in defining the optimal controls. Particularly, we, co we will call them switching functions. And when we apply, OK, this is a, a practical statement of maximum principle. I will go directly to the optimal control because the Hamiltonian, OK, it, it's basically telling us that uh, the optimal control has to minimize the Hamiltonian. And we are lucky here, uh, we, the, the uh, control for each observer, they are sort of decoupled in terms of writing the uh, optimal control, in terms of applying maximum principle. And uh, the Hamiltonian is linear in the control. So we can, we can uh, simply see that uh, u is going to be, or u over vi, we can think of it as theta, I dot the rate of the course angle. So the rate of the course angle will be exactly equal to A, the curvature bound, the maximum curvature, when um, the adjoint variable um, corresponding to theta I is negative. And when lambda theta I is positive, then we have the negative of the maximum curvature. If lambda theta is equal to zero, then it's undetermined. We cannot conclude because we have a, a, a linear function in ui where the coefficient is lambda theta or i. When the coefficient is zero, you cannot say anything about what is optimal. Uh, so when uh, we have 
uh, lambda of theta appearing only a finite number of points, then we have nothing but what we refer to as bang bang because the control switches between a and minus a. I mean, theta i will switch between minus a and a and maybe backwards. If lambda theta of i is equal to zero, then original control ui uh, is said to be singular. So that in other words, um, Pontryagin maximum principle cannot convey any information about the optimality of the control. Okay, we, I said that this lambda theta i, theta i is um, a switching function corresponding to, uh, or for the i, uh, control. Okay, before we start numerical experiments, uh, I have to uh, point to existing theory, which is very helpful and gives us uh, some comfort, let's say, before we go ahead and do all these computations. And that is due to Walter Al, Arsen Donchev, uh, Bill Hager, uh, Malinowski, I not to Kazimierz Kasi, Malinowski and Vladimir Velyov, their contributions into this is, uh, is uh, very, very uh, big, important. And uh, there isn't a, a paper or a presentation about optimal control that I present and deliver without thinking of Asen, certainly more so after he passed away. And uh, I, I would like to um, pay all my respect uh, taking this opportunity. And uh, he's, he's been um, uh, missed a lot immensely. Okay, um, with this background of um, taking this theory as a comfort tool, let's say, that it, making sure that, okay, what we are going to get Okay, we, we, will, we are hoping that we will converge. You satisfy certain conditions. And uh, uh, I've used uh, Ample, which is an optimization modeling language, and IPOPT, uh, which is uh, interior point optimization software um, developed by Vector and Beagler. Uh, we use uh, 1,000 time grid points in Euler discretization to work, for working out the optimal values with the given accuracy, I had to use trapezoidal rule, but then trapezoidal rule gives numerical chatter, which is very well known when we have uh, singular control. Okay, and we can use IPO with any other um, software tool, but we find uh, IPO quite convenient because it seems to have very efficient sparse uh, linear system solvers and discretization of optimal control problems naturally gives rise to those sparse structures. So IPOP is good. Nitro is good, but in this case, uh, I, I, I'm sticking with IPO. So the, these are some trajectories um, that I had reported in the preprint. It's giving the optimal uh, core, the optimal parts uh, that um, maximizes the information. So target is at zero, zero, observer is at uh, five, zero, and the, the maximum curvature is given in this case, five uh, degrees per second. Uh, okay, the, uh, it corresponds to roughly 500 meters of radius of uh, turn. We can check the optimality conditions for this. This is a theta dot. And uh, these are uh, the um, switching functions. As you can see, when switching function is negative, theta dot assumes the maximum curvature value. Uh, here in this region, theta dot is equal to zero for each case at certain different points, then we have singular control and one interesting thing happens at the near the terminal point uh, we have a uh, bank solution coming in so we have bank singular bank for certain trajectories 
Uh, we have a, a locally optimal path it's possible to find an alternative so local optimal uh, and again you can check the optimality conditions and here is uh, the improvement of the information as the time uh, is made longer but each of these are maximum for given tf value okay uh, i i've already talked about what, what they were. So we have singles for single observer, we have this uh, local solution and, and the global solution. For two observers, we have various solutions, three observers. Okay, these are all satisfying the optimality conditions graphically. And here we have a recap of all the solutions. So this is locally optimal, global optimal, as far as the experiments go. Two, of, two observers, three observers. And here is a comparison of the uh, three uh, observers and, and the maximum. Okay, I, I'm aware of, of the uh, time. I'm mindful of the time, but... Um, there many things, many remaining things uh, can be done um, as a follow-up of what I've just uh, talked about. Thank you. Thanks a lot, uh, Yoshan. Uh, are there any uh, questions? Um, so you've gotten your, uh, uh, your uh, what further there about the objectives, I, I wondered, you know, about using the debt, whether that, uh, you know, what, what was the motivation for using the debt of the information matrix again, uh, Yoshin? Um, well, it, it, it corresponds to um, the area of the uh, covariance matrix, uh, associated with covariance matrix. Uh, so the, given the covariance matrix of the random process, there you, you can you can describe when it's a positive definite it corresponds to an ellipse and you want to um, um, minimize the area of that ellipse uh, which is the determinant of the covariance matrix so you want to minimize the determinant of the covariance matrix which corresponds since covariance matrix is the inverse of the fissure information matrix so you maximize the determinant of the tissue information matrix. Right, right. Okay. Um, regarding the, the, the numerical simulations, how, how long did it take you to actually solve uh, particular cases? Okay. That, that, that's a good question. Um, well, for a single observer, the, for, for 120 seconds, it, it would be for, for the 120 second time horizon, it would take um, only five, 10 seconds. Okay. So getting the quick. solution. So, uh, but for three observers, it would still get the solution under one minute. Right, so it's not quite in real time, but it's still actually quite, no. isn't it? You know? Yeah. No, one, one, may hope, one may hope to use this to um, prepare a catalog of uh, trajectories, perhaps, so that, you know, the vehicles or the observer would know in what situation, what kind of trajectory to take. Even taking that trajectory approximately is mm. better, much better than not knowing what to do. Yeah, yeah. And, and uh, just what one thing is that uh, I'm glad we got to hear the word transversality condition used in the talk, which uh, meets one yes. of the you know, objectives of our workshop, you know, so... Uh, Thanks very much for that. <laughs> yes, yes, the meaning <laughs> of that is it is transversal to the terminal condition mm -hmm. in, in, optimal, in optimal control terminology. Yes, yes. Are there any other uh, questions for your turn? Uh, no. Okay, so um, I think we've uh, finished our, our section on uh, time now. So uh, we get a break for a about uh, another hour, and uh, then we'll meet back for the uh, for the evening session. Um, so thanks very much for the speakers and Yolchin. Thanks very much um, for the talk, and uh, we'll um, uh, finish off now and uh, convene 
in about an hour's time.